Hi there once again and welcome to another Expresso Mechanic tutorial. And in this one we're going to be rigging what you see before you on the screen which is of course a centrifugal governor. Often found in steam engines and used to regulate the speed of the engine. If we just press play we'll see what happens. And we can see that it spins up, it gets to its maximum speed and as it does so this lever is raised and in turn pushes down on this button. I've put the button in really for illustrative purposes to show you what the thing might actually be doing. In reality, they might well be used to control a needle valve possibly or a butterfly valve within a tube which would open and release some of the pressure to slow the engine down to a constant speed. That's effectively what they would have been used for. I mean, they are still in use. I mean, I'm not really sure what they, they use centrifugal governors for these days, but they are still in use here and there but uh, it was mainly during the Industrial Revolution when steam engines were prevalent. But anyway, that's what we're going to be about in this tutorial. Now, I have made the scene file for this available and there's a link to it in the show notes, so be sure to download the file before you start doing the rest of the tutorial. But anyway, that's what we're going to be about in this one, so without further ado, let's see if we can make this happen. We'll start by taking a quick look at what we've got in the object manager here. Now at the moment nothing is grouped correctly. They're just a list of objects here and we will need to think about placing them in the correct hierarchical order. The post is going to be essential for making everything rotate. All of these arms, obviously both the, all of the arm mechanisms, they, they've all got to rotate. The spring will rotate or maybe not if you don't want it to, but it probably should rotate and the top bracket and the bottom sleeve here, these all need to be objects that rotate. And this here, this stop, that will rotate. So the post is, is going to be giving all of these objects their rotation, so ultimately they will all be grouped into the post. We've also got a lever assembly down here, if we just click this open. And we can see that we've got a button target here. Now that's just a null object, and if we go to our front view, so F4, we can see that our button target is right at the tip of our lever and if we click on the button we can see that the axes are right flush with the top. So ultimately we're going to be giving this button targets position Y to the position Y of this button in order to make the two become in contact with each other at all times. We'll switch back to our 3D view. Now a number of these objects at the moment have got targets on them and if we select our bottom left hinge here we can see that its Z axis is pointing towards this pin and if we click upon the target here I've got left pin in there as the target object. This was basically just to arrange things correctly and, and set things up so that they were absolutely engineered correctly and I'm just using these targets as helper objects, nothing more. And again, I've got my left arm hinge here, which is this piece, and that's pointing towards the, if we click on it, bottom left hinge, so it's pointing towards this object. And again, that gets things set up correctly. So we can actually lose these target objects now. I'm just going to delete those because I don't need them anymore because we'll be using IK to make this work. Fantastic. So, the first thing that we'll do is create the IK rigs, I think. I think that's the easiest thing to do. In our top bracket here, if we open this, we've got these two objects here. They're both null objects, R1 and R2. So R1 is the root of the IK chain for this particular setup over here. So we need to start thinking about what we're going to be placing in there. And that will be our first port of call. First thing I'm going to do then, I'll select both of the, the routes here and I will give them both IK tags so that we've got R2 set up and ready. We can then think about how we're going to group things into R1. The first thing that we need is this top right hinge because it contains all of the elements that make up this arm. So let's drop that into here. 
we'll open it up. Now, the right pin is where we've got this branch. So we're going to need to group the right arm hinge into there. And we'll also need to group the bottom right hinge into there as well. Before we do that, we've got these other objects beneath the pin. Now I'm just going to grab hold of all of them and put them above because the, the IK tag doesn't care about the order that these things go into this group. It just doesn't care. You can arrange them any way you want. So we'll put the right pin as the last object, even though it's in the middle of the arm. Then we can think about dropping our right arm hinge and our bottom right hinge into there. So let's drop this into here and this into here. So we've got the two elements in there. Now we can see that the bottom right hinge here is going to be the final object in the IK chain. So what we need to do in our IK, if we just select it, we want our endpoint to be this. And straight away we get the display line so we can see that that IK rig is working. It's doing what it should do. We just need a goal, so we'll generate one, add goal, and we've got our, our bottom right goal. Now where does that need to go? Well, it needs to drop into the sleeve. So that's what we need to find. Where is our sleeve? Where is it gone? It's here. And we can see that we've got a couple of targets in there. Now what we'll do is drop this here. Just drop it into there. Oh, well, I beg your pardon, I've done the wrong thing. I need the goal, not the bottom right hinge. I need the hinge goal. Let's just drop that into there. OK, now if we get a hold of our sleeve and we move it, we find that the IK rig is working. So that's doing exactly what it needs to do. So all we've got to do then is a rinse and repeat with R2. That being the case, we know that we want our top left hinge, which is here. So we can take this and drop it into R2. Once again, we can twirl it open and move these objects above the pin. And then we can think about dropping these objects in here. So it will be our left arm hinge that needs to drop into the pin and our bottom left hinge. So now we can select our IK tag and we can drop bottom left hinge into here, working perfectly at our goal grab a hold of our goal and put it here within the sleeve, move the sleeve and now we've got both working perfectly. And that's all you need to do for the IK rig. It's, it's quite simple to set up and it works beautifully. We can now think about getting the lever to actually behave in the correct way. So obviously when the sleeve moves upwards we need the lever to actually be taken with it because obviously this is within our sleeve and that will carry this upwards. So let's think about where we go from here. For a start we will need to give our lever which is down here and we've got its pivot point in the correct place. We will need to give it a target tag so we may as well do that right now. And then we need a target object. Well, we've got this lever target down here. And if we switch to our front view, so F4, we can see that the lever target is in the center of this part of the lever. And that's exactly where it needs to be so that this moves correctly. If we go into our sleeve and select this tube, we can see that the tube's axis or axes are at exactly the same location as the lever target. And that's essential because we need to give the tubes position Y or global position Y in this case, because of course this is a grouped object. We're going to give that to the global position Y of the lever target. Now you may think, well, why can't we just group this into there? Well, if we did that, the sleeve is going to be rotating 
and that would mean that the lever target would also rotate and that's no good to us because obviously we don't need it to do that we just want the lever to move up and down we don't want it to rotate around the sleeve so it has to be a separate entity and we've got to control it via Expresso and talking of which let's give the lever target an Expresso tag bring that into here and then we can do what we need to do so our sleeves tube we can bring that in at the output stage we'll give it global position Y and then we'll bring the lever target in and do the same at the input stage so global position Y and we have that set up and all we need to do is connect the two and that's our first expression complete so a very very simple one here I'll hit F1 to go back to our 3d view and then we can look at this target and at the moment we need a target object and we know that that target object will be the lever target so we'll drop that in there and now if we get a hold of our sleeve and move it we can see that the lever is behaving as it should fantastic so we've got things that far the next thing we can do actually is make the lever press the button down and obviously let it come back up again when the lever returns to its initial position. So with our button we'll give that an Expresso tag and once again it's, it's going to be the same expression really just with different objects. Very very simple. We need to just bring in the button target we discussed that earlier we can we know that it's at the tip of this bottom part of the lever so again coordinates global position y bring in our button and at the input stage global position y connect the two and we're done if we move the sleeve now we'll see that the button will press or be pressed by the lever and it all works beautifully exactly as it should fantastic the final thing then to really get this rig going is to make the governor rotate and get the centrifugal force acting on these two spheres to push the arms outwards and make our spring contract and expand for this expression I'll create a null, call it Expresso and give it the Expresso tag because this expression is slightly bigger and it also needs to be at the top of our object list. As I said earlier the post is going to be the key thing so our post here we can bring into the Expresso expression and the output stage we're going to be actually interested in the rotational velocity which is something we've never used before I'm basing it on this now if we hit control and get our port information here we can see that the type or for our data type is a vector so we've got a vector coming out of here which is that we need to actually break down into real values so we need an adapter and it needs to be a vector to reals because we're only interested in the rotation around the y-axis which of course equates to this x value that's the first thing that we need to do now we also need to think about grouping our various elements that need to rotate into the post so for a start we can drop our top bracket in we can drop our sleeve into here our spring and finally our stop and if we select our post now and select our rotate tool we can see that all of those elements are moving as they should so that's great that's working perfectly well moving on from here we can think about doing a little bit more with the espresso we can bring in two range mappers for a start so we'll bring in one of those just place it down here and then command drag to copy and our x output from our vector to reels can plumb into the range mappers input so that gives us our input value and then we can think about 
what we're going to do from here. Now, before we go any further, I'll also bring in a result node, plumb that in from the X, and we'll see what's going to come out of here when we've actually keyframed our posts rotation. So keyframe animation is our next port of call. For a start, we'll give ourselves a few more frames, we'll say 500. And then we can think about what we're going to do with our post. So with it selected, we know that we're interested in rotation H and at frame zero, we'll record at zero degrees. We can then skip through to the end and at frame 500, we'll make this 57,600 degrees and record there. So we've got quite a few revolutions going on here. Now we need to get our rotation velocity. If we come to our calculate menu, I've got animation refresh checked. So make sure you check that because we want to see what's coming out of this result node. Let's play through. And at maximum speed, it's approximately 90 that's coming out of that result node. That's the number that we're interested in. So with our range mapper, our input upper value can be 90. That's what we can put in there. Now, we need to apply, well, we need to range map basically 0 to 90 to 0 to whatever we want to move our sleeve up to. So obviously our sleeve is starting from zero. In fact, at the moment, it probably isn't because it's not grouped. It's actually starting at minus 8.1239, which is a ridiculous number. So we'll hold down our option key and group that into a null and call this sleeve assembly. Not with capital letters though, sleeve assembly. Okay. And then if we select our sleeve, we can see it's zeroed out, which is what we want. Now let's move this upwards and see where we think it needs to finish up. Well, I think is a round number. If we set that to six, I think that will be fine because that's just about as high as this lever needs to be pushed to, I think. But six looks good. So with our range mapper selected, we can say that our output lower will be zero and six will be our output upper. And that's fantastic. That gets that sorted out. Let's just hit option or command Z just to undo a few times to get that down there. And we need to just do that again, six in there. That's fine. So we've got our range mapper set up and ready to pass its value at the output stage to the sleeve. We'll bring that in and what we need this time, we don't need global position, we actually need position Y at the input stage. Let's see what happens when we run the sequence. And we can see that that's doing its job. That's working beautifully. Yeah. Perfectly happy with that. Now, at the moment, the spring is doing nothing and it needs to be contracting and expanding as the sleeve rises and falls. So that's our next port of call. Now, in order to sort this out, we're going to treat this like the real world. And um, it's important that we do this, actually, and you'll, you'll see why a little bit later. Basically, this sleeve is the object that's going to make the spring contract and expand. So we'll take a coordinates transform position Y out of the, of the sleeve at the output stage, and we can connect this to our second range mapper. And that's great, that's, that's got that that far. But now what we need to do is worry about how much our spring is going to contract. If we open our spring up and we grab a hold of our helix, bring this into here, we're interested in working with the object's height. 
if we look at the height of our helix, we can see that it starts at 20.7 because obviously our helix, the, or the base of our helix is up here. So we've I've turned it upside down. So this is its maximum height and it's going to contract down to zero technically in this direction. Of course, it will never reach zero, but that's not the, not a problem. So in our range mapper, we can say that we want, and if we go into here, we just want to set this up correctly. Now we want our second range mapper to take the height from here. So we're going to go from naught to six. If we place six in there, that gives us our input range. And then we want our output range. Now we know that we're starting from 20.7. And we can connect this to here. Now our upper, our output upper, will probably be 14.7 because that would make sense. If this is going to rise by six, that means the helix is going to basically shrink by six. So 14.7 should be fine for our output upper. And that should give us our completed expresso expression. Let's see what happens if we run the sequence now. And we can see that that's working. The spring is being contracted and it's the top of it is still sitting on top of the uh, sleeve. And then we go back to where we were. So that's working fine. That's doing its job. So all of the Espresso and the IK is now making this behave exactly as it should. To finish it off, what we need to do is group our post and everything else actually into a null. So we'll option G. We'll call this centrifugal governor. And we've got our post in there. We'll also just drop all of these objects in as well we can place our post above them and now we should find if we select our centrifugal governor null that we can move this anywhere in the scene and it will work and we can see that it does so we've moved that around if we just play the sequence it should work fine and it does and that's why we used our sleeves position as opposed to global position within the Espresso. Had we used global position, we'd be getting problems when we move the rig around. Yeah, great. So that's all working as it should. Now, if you don't want the spring to rotate, it doesn't actually have to. If you wish to, you can put the spring above the post. Just take it out of the post. And now it's an independent object and it won't rotate. It will simply contract. It just depends on what you think is more pleasing on the eye, but I rather think it should be in the post because I think in reality it probably would spin with everything else. But, you know, as I say, it just depends on the look that you're going for. It depends on the art direction. But I would say that that should really be grouped into here. Just drop it above the stop. But yeah. That basically is how you go about rigging one of these and getting it to work correctly. And that just about brings us to the end of this tutorial. So as always, I really hope you've enjoyed doing this one and that it's of use to you and it's inspired you and given you some ideas for things that you may be able to incorporate in your own projects. And if you have enjoyed the video, please give it a like. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel, leave a comment and of course, ring the bell. And wherever you happen to be on social media, please, please do share this video because all this good stuff really does help keep the channel moving in the right direction. But anyway, that just about brings the curtain down on this one. So I'll see you very soon on the next tutorial.